Triple E EDC here, back again with another knife video. This is another collection update video. I have posted one or two of these, actually I've posted two of these in the past, and I've had a lot of uh, good comments about it, and I figured it's a lot has changed, so I'll go ahead and do an update. So this is the Benchmade Contigo, the Knifeworks version with M390. Uh, this is an excellent knife, excellent, good, hard-use knife. Uh, I have yet to do the review on this. I will, but that's the little preview to it, is that it is an excellent knife. Uh, it is very jimped out, though, so just be aware uh, before you go ahead, go out and run and buy it. Uh, it's very jimped out. I will go ahead and say that the last I saw this was posted on Knifeworks uh, for an excellent deal of like $142. These were like $200 originally, and that, that's the sale price. I don't know if the sale is still going on, but uh, stop this video, double check to see if the sale sale's going on. If it is buy one. I'm tempted to buy a second one. So go buy that, then come back. The video will still be here when you're waiting for you when you get back. So that is the Benchmade Contigo. This is the Benchmade Super Freak M4 Steel. Coated with the G10 scales, red liners. This is a first production. Excellent EDC knife for larger size EDC carry knife. Nice and light too. Benchmade Griptilian. This is the 550-1, the BK model, the coated blade. This is in 20 CV with the blue liners and the gray G10 scales. If you're going to get a Griptilian uh, and you're not going to get the Hogue Ritter, uh, which is Obviously not a Benchmade Griptilian, but if you're not going to get that one, uh, this is definitely one that I recommend. Uh, the Spidey Hole, or you call it Benchmade Hole, or whatever you want to call it here, uh, is excellent. It gives you something to fidget with, and uh, this is a great version of that knife. The, the blade shape is also good as well, the sheep's foot blade. Sheep's foot blade for a everyday carry. This is another Griptilian. This was actually featured, if it looks familiar, on uh, Tom Hosang Outdoors. He did uh, some testing on this, this exact knife. Uh, you can see where he did his testing. But this is an M4 custom shop. I think it was meant to look like the Benchmade Bug Out. It's got the Bug Out clip on it, the blue scales like the Benchmade Bug Out, uh, the regular version. Although this does not have a satin blade, it has a coated blade, probably because it was M4. And so... This is an excellent one. I'm still planning on getting some micarta scales for this, green micarta scales from Death of All Things. Uh, he had a huge backup in orders, and so I just went ahead and held off on ordering the scales because I didn't want to wait, you know, was it eight or ten weeks uh, for the backup. So I'm trying to wait until he gets less of a backup, then I'll uh, put it in order so it's not tied up for as long otherwise. Uh, just because it's an EDC channel, just real quick, Hinder uh, Investigator Pen. This is the 01 Tool Steel Battlefield Pickup version. And I've already done a video on that, so you guys can look that up. Here is the Benchmade Anthem. This is an integral knife. A lot of the design mechanics of the 940 are in here, the Benchmade's Classic 940. It's a little bit larger than the 940, smaller than, than the Contigo, and this is another one I still have to do an update on. It has a different uh, axis lock mechanism, as you can see in there, and uh, this is just an excellent EDC, uh, especially if you were looking for a titanium integral. The Smoky Mountain Knifeworks 940. This is, I had several 940s in my collection. I sold off some of them or traded them for other things just because I had some other priorities. Uh, so this is actually the lone remaining 940. I do have a 943, which I'll show you next. But this is the lone remaining 940. Really, really nice red infused carbon fiber. The red anno studs, uh, the nice black coated blade. M390 steel. And the smoky gray backspacers for Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. The Benchmade 943, this is a serrated version with the uh, 
the black coating. This is uh, an older knife in my collection. It's still not the oldest knife in, in my collection, but it is the first knife uh, I had. Um, I don't know if, I think I've said this on the channel once or twice before, but this was the first knife I ever bought. Uh, not this exact knife because I actually lost the first knife I ever bought and then I bought it again and then I lost that one too. And this is number three for me. So obviously I do like it and as I've bought it three times, but really it has a lot of sentimental value even though this is not actually the original one. Uh, just so you can show, I can show you real quick. It has that nice uh, blade with a slight clip point. It's got these nice serrations on it. I know a lot of people don't like the combo edge, but this was how I had my first knife set up. And so every time I've bought it again, I've bought it with the combo edge. Got the aluminum scales and I like the way that they wear. I don't have a problem with the way aluminum wears. I know some people do. This is the Benchmade Bug Out with Micarta scales. This is the 535GRY version. Uh, I got the Micarta scales, the Allen Putt Putman scales, and I'm really enjoying the Micarta scales. I may get a Rock Scale Designs backspacer for this at some point, uh, but I haven't yet. And as you can see, this is one of my most carried knives. It gets used quite a bit. And I've done a couple of videos on this. And then I've got my Benchmade bailout here. I haven't used this as much. I've talked about this on my channel that uh, I thought it contemplated getting rid of it because it, you know, it sort of is uh, um, the same for a lot of purposes as the 535, the bug out. But after I've had it for a while, I realized that if I get titanium scales for it, it'll offer something a little bit different to my collection. And even though the 3V on it doesn't really make a huge difference to this particular knife, which uh, this is CPM 3V. Uh, and I know there's some controversy about the heat treat on this. Uh, look, I haven't had any problems with the heat treat edge holding anything like that on this particular knife so far, uh, although I haven't carried it extensively. I do plan on carrying it more once I get those uh, scales, so that's on the list as well. All right, and to round out the Benchmade collection before I get into the Bally's, we've got the Benchmade Infidel. Let's see what just came out of that. Oh, that's just some lint. Uh, one thing about OTF, you will get lint in, in here, so you'll have to clean it out every once in a while. But uh, this is a very, uh, very sturdy, durable OTF. Uh, really feels very rugged in the hand. And deploys extremely easily, extremely, extremely easily. So uh, I really like this. I know a lot of people give it some uh, uh, some guff or whatever you want to call it compared to the Microtech Ultratech uh, because the Ultratech is the sort of standard bearer here. But I really like the Infidel and uh, it's one that I will be keeping if I were to get rid of all of my OTFs. Uh, spoil, spoiler alert for some of the other videos. I'd actually probably keep this one, although if I had a, if I had a combat true dom, which I don't, I might keep that over this. So that's what. Uh, um, but one thing that you know obviously is an issue with this is the price. These are like four hundred something new. Uh, if you're going to buy one of these, buy them on the secondary market. You can find them for like two fifty, three hundred, and you know like new ones or close to new ones. So uh, do that. This is the SOCP folder. You've probably seen the SOCP dagger. This was a short-lived uh, knife. It started out as a, uh, a sort of a, the next stage innovation and it just never took off. I think the advertising wasn't that great for it and that's one of the reasons. But this is a Greg Thompson design, four and a half inch blade. Uh, I think that it's a liner lock. I think I'm gonna do another video on this, uh, but it's just not a priority right now because it is discontinued. This clip, though, is something that I really think should be brought back on other knives. It really is great because uh, it allows you to hide it, tuck it behind the waistband, and a, a belt runs over this. And so you can't, you won't be able to see this in waistband carry uh, behind the belt. And then you just reach your finger behind the belt, and there's a hole here for you to grip onto, and you pull it out, and it just gives you easy withdraw access from behind a belt. 
Why is that good when you can just clip it to your uh, pocket? Well, I wear slacks a lot. I wear suits. Uh, I wear uh, lots of office type clothes. And so while a pocket knife looks great with jeans, uh, it's not necessarily the best for in an office or you know, many of the other places I need to go when I'm in a suit or, uh, or things like that. And I don't wanna necessarily advertise that I'm carrying a knife while I'm wearing those clothes. So putting this behind the belt, uh, is a great way to handle that. Another good way to handle that is to carry a traditional, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute, because the last, excuse me, of the Benchmade uh, non-belly collection is this Benchmade proper with my card of scales. And this is also first production with S30V steel. This is a really good size for a traditional, so I'm very happy with it. It gives me a nice four finger grip and uh, it has some nice walk and talk on it too. Not necessarily the level of a GEC, but look for a modern folder from Benchmade, or a modern uh, traditional folder from Benchmade. This is actually really good. So I'm very happy with that. This is a EDC pocket ar armor from Pop-Off Leather. Uh, and it molds nicely in here. This is the same uh, English tan leather from Pop-Off Leather. Uh, and you can sort of see how it patinas compared to uh, this, which is new. All right, so let's talk about some bellies. So I've got my Benchmade 63. So this is the 63 with the uh, Bowie style blade in D2. You can probably tell the edge is nicked up on this because it's sort of uh, been safetyed up for practicing. I don't want to cut myself while I'm uh, practicing. Flipping the knife. So uh, that's the Benchmade 63. I also have a Benchmade 87 and this has that magnetic latch which is a great feature and this has the nice Warncliffe blade. So this blade is not uh, scuffed up. This is the original blade on it, and I do use this and flip this sometimes. Uh, it's quite nice. The, uh, you can see this is S30V steel, and you probably see it's still got a factory edge on it, but it's still very sharp. Okay, so, um, yeah, and you got the nice uh, channel construction. There you go. All right, and so let's follow that up with some other ballets. The most ridiculous ballet I own, which is this. <laughs> this is the uh, Cold Steel FGX. Uh, Bella song. I think there were two versions of this, one with a single uh, edge and one with a double edge. The double edge came out first, so I got the double edge. Uh, the double edge is surprisingly sharp, so which makes it hard to flip because you're going to hit your fingers. They're, both handles are bite handles, uh, so you better get your wrist passes uh, great. It's all plastic construction, so you know it's not the best flipper in the world. It's also massive. Uh, little size comparison with the 63. So you can imagine uh, it's not really so realistic. What do I use it for? Well, it was $12 to begin with, so I didn't feel like it was a big deal uh, to buy it as a novelty. And uh, it actually is not just a novelty. It's actually pretty, um, you could stab this. You've seen uh, probably some of the Cold Steel videos online. This will go through you know, several layers of cardboard uh, I mean, I'm talking about a stack like like this thick of cardboard. So uh, it is pretty effective um, in a pinch. Uh, not that I'm not that this is something that you should ever really try to defend yourself with, but uh, it can be effective. And so, where do I keep this? I keep this in my car door. All right, uh, trainers. I got my Squid Industries Squiddy G. So this is Squiddy G. And the difference between the Squiddy G, the biggest differences are it's got a little bit of weights on this on the end and over here. 
and uh, it's got this nice happy face cut out as opposed to the uh, and the ears as opposed to the rounded. Then I've got the squid trainer. Sorry, doing this in front of a camera is very difficult without knocking it over. So try to do a little Y2K rollover. All right, so this is Squid Trainer 3.0. I've done a couple videos on this, I believe. All right, and the last Bally I own is the Hinder Nieves. And I do have some other Hinderers to discuss. Uh, but this one is very nice titanium construction, sandwich construction. It's got S35VN steel. This is the working finish version. You can see the working finish there. The biggest, uh, this is actually quite a nice bally. The biggest complaint, two biggest complaints I have about it, probably are the latch is not ideal, but you know, a lot of people remove the latches. And the, uh, uh, the tang pin is okay on this. The uh, I forget what these are called. Uh, it's, it escapes my, me right now. I'll remember it two seconds from now. But uh, these will pinch the hell out of your fingers. Um, so I've seen some people ground them down. But uh, that's really the biggest complaint. This is the Tuya Knife Talisman. They, this has my card of scales on it. It does not come stock with my card of scales. It also does not come stock uh, milled out like... This is over here. Um, this was some m custom mods that uh, Jack Farmboy, who uh, you should go subscribe to, uh, who's a, he's a YouTuber uh, who does knife videos. He uh, owned this knife before me and I uh, won it in one of his giveaways. So uh, it's quite uh, it's quite nice with the milled out pattern because it's quite a heavy knife. This is steeled. Uh, over here. This is not not titanium. It's not aluminum. It is steel. So uh, it is quite heavy. It's also OS 10, which is, uh, you know, I think an upgrade from OS 8. Uh, but, you know, it's still not the most ideal. It does have very good action for what amounts to an $80 knife. So uh, I really like this. Um, there are some drawbacks and there are some other knives in the $80 range I might recommend over this but I will cover this in another video as well okay couple ZTs uh, this is the ZT0562 uh, with CF carbon fiber carbon fiber show side 20 CV steel, titanium lock side, and this just has buttery smooth action. Boom. This is the ZT 056, oh, I'm sorry, 0452. I always forget the numbers here. 0452 WBW. This is a uh, sprint run version in S35VN and white carbon fiber. Uh, this is, it's also got a black wash blade. If you ever seen the black wash on the Kershaw Leak, it's a very similar uh, wash to that. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is a very similar wash to that. This is, Quite a nice compact long knife. So if you need a something that's a little bit longer and you want it to be compact in your pocket, this is an excellent option. I'd actually love to see a comparison between this, by the way, and the Weeble Gardis 037, which is another long slim knife that's good in a package like that. So a couple of Microtechs. Microtech Ultratech stone wash version. This is in M390.
the action on this is just excellent, as you'd expect that of an Ultratech. Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is one of the best thumb stud deployers of any thumb stud knife. Just it, it gives you a nice thwack and great fall shut action. Just a great hard use knife, aluminum construction, and this aluminum is no joke. So don't sleep on the aluminum. One of the best hard use knives out there. Speaking of hard use, Cold Steel AD10. This is excellent, an excellent value for the money. Uh, this was not an excellent value when it was up at 180, but I think it's dropped back down to around 140, which makes it a good value again. Uh, I think I've done a video on this, but I haven't done a full review. But uh, this is the S35VN. This one is the hollow ground one. I think they replaced it with a... Uh, they started making them with a flat grind, so... I don't think they make that anymore. Uh, just something to note, the clip on this sucks. So, sorry Cold Steel, uh, and sorry people who want to carry this. The clip sucks for a variety of reasons, which I will cover uh, in a video if I haven't already. Oh, and the other thing is, the clip sucks, and it's not an easy clip to replace. That's the other thing. The spacing of the screws is not ideal for replacing it with other clips. Okay. I think I'm going to do these together. These are paramilitary twos. This is, these are both custom scales. This is Maximit. and copper scales with a shipwreck finish and a I believe uh, it, I, people always tell me I get these confused I'm sorry I think it's an MXG clip but it might be a lynch clip I'm not sure I didn't buy the clip it came this way all right this one is the uh, lightning strike carbon fiber scales from Shepard CC 20 CV blade and again, same type of clip, just different color. Pull out a couple of Mannixes. Do this a little faster since we've got a lot of knives to cover. This is the Crew Wear in Carbon Fiber. I believe this was an exclusive, maybe a Knife Works exclusive or a Knife Center. I can't remember. I don't think it's Knife Center because Knife Center has a smooth G10. This is the carbon fiber and S9DV. And this is the textured carbon fiber. The backspacer from Shepard Customs, Shepard CC. And he also put a uh, custom grind on the spine of this so that it's nice and rounded and then we've got the DLT trading exclusive 20 CV Manix 2 with the Reggie 10 scales and here are three sought after Shamans, Spiderco Shaman. This is the St. Nick's exclusive in 4V, Reg E10. Carbon fiber in S90V. And Micarta and crew wear. The Shaman is an excellent, another excellent hard use EDC knife, uh, larger EDC knife, I should say, and one that I highly recommend uh, if you're considering a larger 
uh, EDC knife. This and the Manix are both great. Uh, they're good for a little bit different things. I would say the Manix is probably better for uh, just a sturdier back because it has those steel liners. Uh, but don't sleep on the Shaman either. Spider Kokopara. This is going to be reviewed soon on my channel. This is the CQI version. Nice red backspacer. And of course the wire clipper. Can't forget to show the wire clip. Rat 1, Ontario Rat 1 and D2. This knife has been shown a lot, so I'm not going to do a long show on that. Protect Magic 2. With the sliding scale, you actuate by squeezing your hands together and pushing the scales apart. Protec Godfather, Micarta, Ivory Micarta, Tuxedo version, 154cm steel. Boker Subcom in D2. I think it's just called a Boker Sub. It's got that stone wash finish. Boker Kalashnikov Sub. This is the Boker Kalashnikov in CTS XHP, the flat grind version. These Boker uh, Kalashnikovs are excellent budget automatic knives uh, with terrible clips. This is the CRKT Slacker, another uh, prize one actually from Jack Farm Boy. And this has the uh, Field Strip technology, which I've shown on my channel a few times from Ken Onion. VDK Impaler. This has a uh, not custom anno, but semi custom anno, the limited run. Uh, it's got that nice compound grind. Serialized on the blade, serialized again on the, where is it? Uh, there it is, on the handle. And the reason they don't match, I believe, is the handle is only anode to a couple of uh, ones that match this, and the blade, the run on this blade was a different number. And this just, this blade, I mean, I can't stop it from shutting. It's just completely fall shut. Fantastic. <laughs> Feels great in the hand. Talk about a knife that surprised me. The Chavez 229. This is the uh, Chavez Knife Group 2019 version. This thing is just an excellent EDC. I was scared off by the clip for a while. Turns out the clip really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, you don't get as many looks as you think you will, uh, but the blade shape on this and the feel, everything is just awesome. I now understand why everyone loves Chavez so much. And this is made by uh, Riyadh. All right, couple grail knives. Hinderer XM18. This is, uh, I believe, a Gen 4 or Gen 5, I'm not really sure. S35VN Skinner Blade. I believe that's a working finish on the titanium, and it's got this nice G10 Warthog scale. This is a titanium scale, texture titanium scale, XM24 Spanto blade. This is a massive knife. Uh, it is, an, it just feels nice, heavy in the hand. Uh, it, it definitely feels large. You will notice you're carrying it. Uh, it will take up room in your pocket, but you just feel so good when you carry it, and uh, <laughs> I love this thing. Plus, you can't really argue with this.
This is the Battlefield Pickup Hinderer Full Track. Really love this knife. This is it's just a work of art. Let's see if I can get this on here. It's really just a work of art. We Chimera, I've reviewed this on the channel before. This is one of the hardest hitting uh, flippers. You know, it, it just rockets out. Fantastic, fantastic flipper. Great action from, from Wii Knives. I mean, just listen to this. I mean, that just, oh, that rockets out every time. Every time. It's so good. Biggest uh, caveat about this, that is not a, a real finger choil, or at least it doesn't really work that way. I wish it did because this is a perfect th place for your thumb to go. Uh, but you will feel the tip of the blade here. Not a huge deal because it doesn't really cut you, but you'll feel it for sure. This is uh, two for one here. This is the Wii Roxy 4. Now this is a prototype, so uh, this has never been carried. But this is uh, this one I've carried before. Uh, I really like the... The action on this is nice and smooth. The clip on this is pretty good. Uh, I like the flame anno on this. The uh, fact that you can spidey flick it on the fuller or the uh, hole here is excellent. And uh, I like really like the four inch Wardenclyffe blade. And the choil here is perfect. I mean, it's really perfect. And the blade comes right up to the choil. One of my favorite knives of all time, uh, the Bird Blades Iron Wolf. This thing also rockets out like a beast, and there's no like reverse detent here. You you pull, you just tip the blade slightly, turn it down, and it just falls shut like buttery smooth. You don't have to push it past anything. It just the whole way back. It's so good. And uh, the this micarta feels great. This stone washed. Uh, Titanium bolster is excellent. The bolster lock here works great. You have a nice landing spot for your fingers here. Nice cutouts to get you to access the bolsters. Uh, the only thing that you know people might complain about is the flipper tab's pretty big, but I think it gives you a nice purchase, and I like it. <laughs> uh, the truth is, is I really don't carry this because this is kind of a safe queen. It's a knife they don't make anymore, and it's just so perfect, it's hard to carry. Uh, so what else do I have? Uh, I've got some fixed blades. So I've got the Topps 20th Anniversary Tex Creek with the uh, custom Kydex and leather here. It's not really custom, It's uh, this is what comes with the knife, but it's a special for the 20th Anniversary Edition. The 20th Anniversary Edition has this nice uh, red infused carbon fiber, with I think that's white micarta and then some green or black, I think it's black micarta uh, in there, uh, or it's white G10 and black micarta, I can't remember. Uh, but it's uh, it feels great in the hand, uh, really is a good hand filling knife. And you know, it's, uh, it's a great blade shape, has a little slight recurve at the end right here, so you can really get into stuff. CPM 154. I think the normal ones are 1095 uh, and micarta, uh, but this is the, like I said, the uh, um, 20th anniversary one. These are still, I believe, somewhat available. Uh, so if you're interested in one of these, grab one before they're gone because they're obviously limited edition. Bradford Guardian 3. Micarta Scales, 3D mic Contour Micarta, Warning Version, Nimbus Finish. This is, this knife, if you're looking to EDC a fixed blade, and I was of the opinion that I needed a four inch uh, knife to, to, to take, three inches of blade would not be enough, uh, and 
as far as fixed blades go, this is actually the perfect size. I mean, Bradford nailed the, the size on this. And the handle on this is so short, uh, you know, it boggles the mind because you, you still get four fingers on this because of the choil, but you still get four fingers on this. Whereas, uh, you know, anything else with a, you know, three, three, three and a half inch blade, let's look at the Benchmade 940, for example, which is not a large knife. I mean, look at the handle difference, big difference. So, you know, the, uh, the Bradford Guardian, if you're looking for, you know, a, a fixed blade, EDC fixed blade, uh, the Warney is not the best EDC. You maybe go with the drop point, but uh, I like the Warney because you can use uh, some fingers up here and really get into packaging and stuff like that. So I, I like this a lot. And I think you can tell from some of my other knives that I like the Warneys. I also do recommend the Kydex sheath for it. This is the Bradford Kydex sheath, the one that you can order on their website. Uh, this is an excellent Kydex sheath. Get the taco version. I have a uh, video talking about taco versus pancake also. This is the uh, Phobos Knives Tier 1 Mini. And this is the grip on this that you can get on this is one of the best grips of any knife I have. The jimping, I mean, locks your hand in probably one of the best of any knives that I have. Uh, the, the convex edge on this is great. Uh, as one of my viewers pointed out on this knife, on the, the review I did of this knife, the blade, the choil in this blade really does cut into some of the cutting edge a little bit. They probably could have made it smaller. Why did they make it so big? Well, the main reason, and I understand why they did it, is because uh, it's meant to be used by operators, Phobos for operators, by operators, uh, and operators often wear gloves in the field, so they needed a room for a gloved finger uh, that wouldn't slice open your glove. So that's really the main reason, I believe. Uh, you know, but this has a great striking pommel, uh, excellent striking pommel, nice blue liners here, uh, black micarta. Uh, it's just a great shape. Um, it feels almost better choked up than it does, uh, you know, back, but it feels still feels great back. So, yeah, I'm very happy with this. I do EDC this sometimes, even though it's quite large. And the sheath on this is really good. This is, uh, I did the EEP on the sheath, so if you're wondering why it looks a little different, looks a little darker, uh, it has the uh, treatment on it. All right, my multi-tool that I use is a Leatherman Free P4. Uh, I really like it. It is quite large compared to some of the other ones uh, I've shown you you know but I, I like the one hand access it offers uh, the fact that the tools are easily accessible on the outside I, I don't have to go digging my fingernails into them uh, that makes it great I know Nick Shabazz just recently did a review of this and he mentioned that you really have to you know it's easier to pull these out with your fingernail or whatever he was saying uh, you don't need your fingernail literally you just Put some downward pressure on it, you can uh, get the tool you need, you pop it out. You, you don't need a fingernail. But this is, uh, this is great. Also, the clip, uh, when Nick Shabazz reviewed it, he mentioned that there was a, uh, a lanyard hole only on it. That's how it originally came. Uh, but after a while, they, uh, they started putting these clips on, and you can just call them and they'll give you a clip. Uh, they didn't charge me for this one. I know they charge on the website. You can go on the website and order them. But if you call them and say, hey, I wanted a clip on this. It came with a lanyard hole. Can, what can you do for me? They'll, at least they took care of me. So, you know, I, I recommend you give it a try. All right, then I've got my uh, sort of go pack here that I keep in my, uh, it's my, sort of my EDC pack. I keep this in my backpack and, I did, I'm going to do a separate video of just uh, what's in the pack and why, but on the outside I have this. This is uh, sort of a last ditch knife. Uh, I hope I never have to use this, but um, the, you know, it's, it's made by, uh, you can see Michael Janich and Fred Perrin. I forgot the name of this knife. It's like Max Knives or something, 
Uh, it is a, it's like a 440C or 440A, I can't remember. Uh, and it actually lines up perfectly if you put this edge to edge with a Yojimbo, uh, which Janish also designed. The blade actually lines up perfectly with it. it both of these are meant to be self-defense knives. Uh, so if I ever needed to, it's sort of right there, or is a last ditch knife if I just don't have a knife on me. Uh, but I don't really wear this as a neck knife. I just sort of keep it in the front of the pack and, you know, uh, put down the Velcro right here so that when I draw this, the sheath catches on the Velcro and then uh, the knife pulls out. So something like this. That, that didn't work. I guess I didn't engage the, the Velcro. Here, let's try that again. But, yeah, that's not working well. i got to separate the Velcro. Again, I hope I never have to use this. <laughs> Especially if I'm going to have operator error like that. Okay, let's open this up. And I'm not going to go through everything that's in here. I just wanted to point out that I have the uh, classic here, the... Uh, Swiss Army Knives Classic, you know, has uh, your basic functions here. Really, the main reasons I have this are he for here are the tweezers and the uh, and the toothpick because I have a lot of these other things on my other uh, knives. Um, I have a um, Boker Subcom here. I just sort of have it in here because it fits, and uh, I got this for free with an order from Blade HQ. So it's an extra knife. You know, I've got my sidekick in here. Uh, so when I, I'm not taking my whole backpack with me, which is where I keep my Leatherman Free P4, if I'm just taking this, I still have my sidekick. And then I have the uh, Leatherman Micro here. Main reason I have this is just a better pair of scissors and then the tweezers in here as well. I think that does it for my knife collection. I, uh, yeah, I think that does it. Uh, so, I hope this video, uh, you enjoyed it. It's quite long. I apologize for the length of it. Uh, but once I get talking about knives, you guys know I just keep going on and on and on. Uh, but I do thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Uh, I'd love to, uh, to grow my, uh, my channel and also to keep talking with you guys. Please also leave a comment uh, in the comment section. I just love having some conversations with you guys about knives. And, uh, and of course, like the video. Thanks so much.